thanks everybody for uh, coming along. Um, there's a few things that I want to try and go through today. Um, the main thing really is just to have a kind of quick, quick kind of catch up on where we are with everything um, and start thinking about the next steps as we kind of released a bunch of stuff um, last week. So it's kind of useful to useful time to kind of stick, take stock and make sure that we're prioritizing the right things uh, in this group. Um, so we'll put this slide. I'll share the one. Is that me or you? I've got frozen leave if everyone else has too. Yeah, 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 we've got that too. Me? <laughs> Maybe the weather got really bad. Hang on, let's see if he's... Sorry about that. I had a big crash from Zoom. Right, uh, let me try that again. Uh, right, hopefully you can see those slides now. Um, so yeah, so I just want to do a, a quick uh, status update um talk about some of the stuff that we've published or on on their way shortly and then i have most of the call just discuss um priorities for the next uh really the next couple of months of work and the next uh three or four of these meetings um so i just run some stuff by you and get some feedback on that so in terms of um status update so hopefully you saw a flurry of messages to the mailing list last week um, but the 1.1 modeling spec was published. Um, the big thing there was obviously the facilities, but also amenities and then improvements to age range, gender restrictions. Um, we, uh, to support uh, data publishing, we are planning some work on a validator tool um, and we're hoping to get that underway next week. Um, we've just been trying to find uh, some resource to help us with that. Um, so that mean there'll be a bit more help for bringing new publishers on board um, and alongside that there is uh, the developer site which I've mentioned a couple of times on the call um, it's at uh, developer.openactive.io um, it would be good to, uh, there's some more content that we need to put in here and that it needs to be updated to make sure it's in line with the 1.1 spec but it'd be useful just to have a, a quick kind of bit of feedback from um, those of you on the call um, just to say, you know, whether it's a kind of useful structure. What we're trying to do is kind of bring all of the, docu the, the documentation to support publishing into one site. So you have to do less jumping around between um, <coughs> schema.org, our specs, and other documentation. So there'll be a single reference point for, say, events I'm showing here, which will clearly list out all of the required fields, what the values are expected to be give you examples and documentation in line. It'll be linked out to all of the relevant places, but it should be everything you need to kind of be able to start um, uh, creating and populating a data feed, feed. So as well as the kind of uh, reference on the properties, which we'll just skim past, there will also be a set of uh, examples. So some handcrafted stuff, but also the site automatically generates a, is it a full fat example of all of the the data that could go into um, uh, into a feed. Um, so it'd be good if you could have a look at that. Um, I'm not going to go through it in more 
detail than that now. Um, but if you could take a look and then just you know, just give me a drop me an email or something just to let me know whether you think it's useful, whether you've got any suggestions for um, extra guidance that we should put together. Um, I'm trying to get some resource, to, some technical authoring resource to help us write some uh, developer tutorials to support publishing particular types of data um, so that we can start to build out uh, some content there as well. So if you've got suggestions on uh, what we can do, um, you know, based on your experience, either publishing or using data, uh, that would be helpful. Um, so the other thing that we pushed out uh, on Friday was a um, refreshed draft of the booking API. Um, it's called one, uh, 0 0.5, but as I said in my email on Friday, that's really just a number indicating progress like, like, that we're moving forward rather than how much uh, is still to be done. So we're much more, we're much closer to having a 1.0 than 0 0.5 actually indicates. Um, we're just rolling the number forward based on some of the early work that was done. Um, I'm going to come back to that uh, in the status update. Um, what we're, what I am aware of based on discussions that we had last week and feedback that we've been getting from startups and elsewhere is that we really do need to pick up some progress around the activity list. Um, so we are going to be inviting a few people to a face to face meeting to discuss some of the issues uh, and uh, uh, potential options for moving forward with that on the 20th. Um, and then we'll kind of check back in with the group here. Um, it's a little bit, as I said last week, it's a little bit different to the other work because it's less about uh, standards and a bit more about um, uh, how the community uh, curates a shared resource, manages a shared uh, data set, um, which is a kind of slightly different dynamic than has been going on um, to date here and elsewhere in the, in the program. Um, so yeah, so we've had a, a quite a flurry of activity uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, pleased with that progress. Facilities took as much longer than I was um, expecting. Um, so I'd, I'm really keen to make sure that we have some momentum or we'll pick up some momentum over the next um, next few weeks and push forward with other work. <clears throat> so um, thinking about that, that roadmap and, and priorities. Um, I'm not going to go into the activity list side of things today because I want to see what we learn from the, the community discussion in a couple of weeks. So I'm just going to focus that, that chat today on booking and the modeling spec. Um, so if we start with um, booking, um, uh, some of you were at the workshop that we ran the end of last year um, to start gathering um, uh, requirements around uh, what the first version of booking spec would look like. Um, there is a uh, working uh, documentation, there is a working list of requirements um, which I shared after uh, after we had that event. Um, in that document there is a kind of breakdown of a very detailed set of requirements and indication of whether it needs to be covered in the version one spec. Um, where we are at the moment is that the what's currently called 0, 0 0.5 actually covers the majority of those requirements. There's only, we're looking through the list, there's only two areas um, where we don't have a, uh, some technical features or documentation at the moment. The first is around facilities. So the draft currently speaks exclusively about booking places at events. So there's, um, uh, some work to be done to review whether we might need to change anything to support booking of facilities. Um, my gut feeling at the moment is that it wouldn't, it's not going to require a major change to the way that the API design currently works in order to do that. Um, but we at least need to work through some examples, um, both to confirm uh, my assumptions, but also to uh, improve the documentation in the spec so it's clear about how that happens. Um, the other thing that we haven't considered yet is um, some, what I'm calling here just kind of terms and conditions. Um, I suspect that there will need to be some information displayed to uh, participants at the time that they are booking a place and an event. Um, 
we haven't got a way for that for those kind of terms and conditions to be um, communicated at the moment, either through the modeling spec or in the booking API spec. So we might need to just put a bit of thought into how that is, uh, those are made machine readable, you know, just in terms of including links to terms and conditions, etc. So I think we're um, uh, in a pretty good spot at the moment for, for booking. Um, we, my plan is to get a, another updated draft by the 20th of July, um, hopefully to cover um, both of those things. Um, and I'm proposing that we aim, we, we aim as a community to get to 1.0 uh, by the end of August. Um, that's, uh, it both feels like a long, long way away and also a short time. Uh, the, the really, for me, the gate on how quickly we can move forward is the, the level of detailed feedback we get on the API design. What I would really be, uh, what I would really be happy with is if we could get some people to actually kick the tires on the spec and try building some prototypes or some test implementations to see if there are specific issues that come up uh, in that process. So as a community, we did that uh, a bit with an earlier version of the, uh, of the booking API and we use that as a way to kind of get some initial momentum. Um, I feel like we, we need to kind of do a bit more of that now to, um, to get the kind of detailed feedback that I think would be good so that everyone is confident in that 1.0 release. Um, so I'm going to be, um, you know, trying to well, encourage you, you, those who are on the call or anyone who's kind of watching the recording afterwards to kind of get involved, but also trying to do some outreach to, uh, you know, to potential implementers or users of the API um, to see if they can get involved. Because I think um, given that this is such a kind of critical part of the ecosystem, everyone needs to be comfortable in um, uh, the functionality it offers. Um, we know that there's a whole raft of stuff that would follow from a 1.0 specification. You know, there are some things it doesn't do around uh, account management, for example. Um, but we're, we're being led by the requirements that we've, we've been given. Um, and I'm keen to kind of deliver on that before we kind of start to add more to the specification. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of where we are for booking. Um, anyone got any uh, comments or feedback on that as an outline plan at the moment? Um, it might be good to get an understanding, um, just for, for those that are going to be reading this, um, there'll be more work to potentially um, update again to 1.0. So obviously there's been some work done to get to 0.3. They'll, 0.4 was skipped because of the chances of it changing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing here that the ideal path would be that there's, uh, there is active implementation done on 0.5 with the expectation that further implementation will need to be done to catch up with 1.0 do you get have you got any sense of the order of magnitude difference between 0.3 and 0.5 and then 0.5 and what you'd expect to change before 1.0 just so that we can um manage people's expectations with that yeah okay um everyone, obviously if if i uh, if i jump over to the spec um in the spec now we have a um uh, we've updated some of the documentation, but the, 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 like the basic flow of the specification, the kind of interactions between client and server, I don't think that hasn't changed in any uh, me real meaningful way since 0 0.3. And I don't think it's going to change um, drastically between now and 1.0. Um, the, it, where I suspect there may be changes is, is in the, some of the detail uh, maybe around some of the um, uh, the JSON formats in the request and response, we might want to tweak the, the model in a few places. Um, we may want to uh, tweak uh, how we're using some of the HTTP methods, but I don't think that it's going to be between now and getting to 1.0 is going to be a complete rework of what's there. Mm. So I think it would be a, a uh, relatively small change. I mean, I think we're in a pretty stable spot. The, it's not a complicated workflow to do this this booking the way that we've separated out um, certainly the kind of payment side of things. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's super helpful, especially in forming um, conversations like with um, Legend, for example, um, on the kind of how how and where to pick this up. It seems like it is useful to actually implement 0.5 with the expectation that by the time that implementation is probably midway through, 1.0 might well be released in August. And so it will be a kind of start implementing and then, uh, so almost if we get to the point where implementers have implemented as a QA step, the kind of, you know, just getting it as far as UAT almost um, 0.5 and then suggest that actually the go live is actually held until we've had the chance to consolidate feedback, push it back. So rather than asking everyone for two sets of implementations, which are going to double mm -hmm. almost, let's go through the process together, QA together, make those amends together and then finish the, the, the whole journey together. So we should end up with all the implementers that are working with us finishing together at one. Yeah, I think that'd be a good way to do it. Um, and it, it's more likely that we'll then, people will follow through and actually launch the um, launch the APIs rather than just doing kind of disposable um, implementations. I mean, um, uh, I, I, I'm going to see whether we can do some, you know, prototyping around reference implementations of either clients or servers that, um, within the ODI team, but I don't really have, I'm not sure yet how much of that we can do and I'm expecting whatever we produce will be pretty disposable, just kind of simple test harnesses or illustration rather than something that somebody could build into a production system. Mm -hmm. I suppose the potential value of that would be um, validator type, you know, something that people could use, like you say, test harnessy stuff that people could use to actually check their implementation matches at least the 0.5 version. Yeah, there's, yeah, there are there are some those all kind of trickier things here because you, there's a whole set of test data to kind of get set up in platforms. But um, yeah, that we certainly need to get to that kind of level of um, checking and assurance that people are conforming to the spec. Um, any other comments from anyone on the call? That makes sense to me, that roadmap. It seems like it's moving quickly, which is nice. And uh, yeah, quick to be uh, keen to get James and Sherwin to have a look at the specs and give some nice um, detailed feedback on that as soon as possible. And just uh, yeah. keen for speed, and it seems to be going in that direction, which is uh, positive for sure. Cool. So, I mean, the, the best way to help support that momentum is to, is to start, is, is to do a review. Uh, and just, fi just file GitHub issues on the spec. Um, because we can have the discussion, you know, we don't have to hold up discussion through these calls. We can have the debates in GitHub. I'd sooner to have, you know, a hundred minor issues and questions around clarifications than, you know, waiting two weeks for a kind of polished review as well. So, you know, as thoughts and issues come up, uh, let's try and address them, tick them off as soon as possible. Awesome. Yeah, we'll do that. Presumably, if things come up as questions that are out of scope things, we should still raise issues for them and then just file them into... Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, there's, a, there's a project board that... I, I'm using project boards to help kind of uh, manage the, the issues the backlog at the moment. Um, we go to the one for the booking spec, um, just to try and make sure it's clear about what stuff is in flight. So... Um, uh, there is a on the project board there is an outer scope for v1 section so i'm kind of keeping the things open but just also having a reference point um for uh for those kind of conversations we're going to come back to um so you can see like here the in progress these are some things that um chris thought he's working on the spec uh, needs to pick up um some of the next iterations uh, i need to put the terms and conditions on there as well um okay um any other comments feedback on that if not i'll move on to the modeling stuff one thing to consider with terms and conditions is age age um something that the change for life work has brought out is there's a requirement to um capture age consent um so uh, that's a gdpr requirement might be worth thinking about that in this version i'm not sure whether that's in in scope but yeah um, raise an issue for that yeah i'm gonna 
I mean, look, because the, the terms and conditions stuff came up um, out of decomposing those requirements, but I haven't really got, we haven't really got a kind of a scope for what that change needs to be. So I'll, I'm going to put together a, an issue as a proposal that will kind of outline what I think needs to go in and we can, we can get some feedback on that to get those kind of requirements in. Um, as with all these things, I, I want to try and make it sort of, um, you know, hit the kind of minimum requirements. I don't, I don't want to get into, if, unless it's, you know, absolutely necessary, having a completely machine readable set of terms and conditions and kind of booking constraints. It's more just a set of, um, you know, pointers to things that a user might need to be aware of, you know, these are terms and conditions that you can pop up in, a, in an app or in a window or something. Yeah, sorry, it was more that there's a particular tick box for GDPR that needs to be ticked to say that the person booking is open at age um, in order that we can... So yeah. That's, that's the thing. Um, but if, if, that's a, if, if that is a specific GDPR thing, then it, in a way it doesn't need to be... We just need to acknowledge that in the spec. Everyone would need to put it in. It doesn't need to be a machine-readable thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, um, in that case, I'm going to move forward to the modeling spec um, and the work around that. Um, so, um, so we didn't we didn't achieve it for facilities, but what I wanted to want to what I was trying to move us to was to have a kind of uh, a new release of the modeling spec every couple of months. Um, so we do an editor's draft each month. The following month, we do a release. So that would mean um, following uh, the publication of 1.1 last week, that would mean we need to have a new editor's draft at, by 27th of July at the latest, which gives a month of comment and debate. Uh, and then we might aim for 1.2, for example, by 31st of August. Right? So that it just sets a bit of a rhythm for um, uh, doing regular updates. I've, you know, it might vary in scale, um, but just so that we've got something and we're making sure that we're scoping our next piece of work around what we can achieve in that time scale. Um, as I've just alluded to, um, that doesn't mean that we, you know, uh, can't have ongoing discussions around proposals, um, including those that aren't necessarily in our immediate kind of month or two month time frame in, in GitHub, right? I don't want to close down any, uh, useful discussions everywhere. Um, but looking at the, the stuff that we've got in the backlog and that has come up in discussions so far, that to me there's two areas that um, look like they are uh, priority candidates for further work. Um, one is um, uh, around routes, but this would be supporting publication of new types of opportunity data. Um, the other is around uh, validation, which is something that um, we do need to make some progress on. Um, we'll be kind of discussing on and off for some time. So I'm just going to kind of uh, go through, give a bit of context on each of those and then kind of suggest a roadmap to move forward. Um, the Roots work um, has uh, a number of people have suggested that they would like to be able to publish this kind of data and also consume this type of opportunity data. So it's just a publication of walking, running, and cycling routes. So primarily what I'm thinking of is kind of self-directed activities. You just don't want to find where these routes are and then you, you'll go and participate um, you know, at your own, own time. There is a proposal doc, which I put together and circulated last week. Um, so uh, it lists people who might publish this data or are in, we've, that the ODI has had discussions with as part of the engagement activity. Um, so based on that um, and some uh, requirements that have been sent by a few people, the proposal outlines the kinds of information that people are currently publishing around routes. Um, a lot of it is just basic kind of what, basic metadata stuff. What's the route? Where, you know, where do I go for more information? What type of activity it is? Uh, and a bunch of that stuff we've already got in the spec. The, the new bits are information about the route itself. Where does it start? What's the track? What's the distance, the elevation, etc. cetera. Um, so in the proposal, I've taken some data. Uh, there's some stuff from the Forestry Commission, some stuff from Ordnance Survey, to just illustrate what it would look like in the, in the data model. 
um, it's actually a pretty small change. Um, I think there's uh, one new type, uh, so a root type, uh, and a, a couple of new properties. Um, so distance, um, starting point, um, and a root property to point to a GeoJSON file or a GPX file. Um, all of the other stuff that people publish, so descript titles, descriptions, categories, so they get tagged, the activity, whether it's walking, cycling, etc. The, the ease of the, you know, the level, or kind of how easy the route is, is all covered by existing terms. So doing this, is, is, I think, is a, given that people are asking for it, it's worth uh, putting some effort into doing it, but it's actually quite a quick thing, I think. It would be quite a small change. We're not talking about something at the level of uh, facilities. Um, so, uh, I mean, if anyone's got any feedback on that now, happily take it, but I, I think that's worth doing in our next set of, of revisions. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of, given that it's so, so straightforward, I'm pretty close to being able to just put, put this into a new editor's draft um, if, we want to, um, if we want to do that. But um, having a bit of feedback on the GitHub issue would be uh, good as a starting point as well. Um, so that feels more like a kind of a small change. It's a, you know, it's a new, data, new set of data types. It's just a kind of extension to where we're at the moment. The other proposal um, around validation is a bit trickier, um, mostly because um, it will end up with some breaking changes to published data. So the proposal here is to um, find some ways to improve the quality, uh, well, both improve the quality of published data um, by making the specification a bit stricter, um, but also making it a little bit easier to conform to the specification by reducing the number of options that people have uh, around sharing the same information. Um, if I like, go back to give you a like, com concrete example, um, go back to the developer documentation. If you look at the activity field on an event, you can put that in as uh, a text, just a string, an array of strings, a con an object, a concept, or an array of concepts. There's like four different ways to do that. Um, we did it that way at the start because it's um, uh, schema.org allowed that kind of flexibility and we had less sense early on about how people were gonna be able to uh, publish their data. So keeping the options open felt like a reasonable thing to do. Um, but in practice, it's just adding uh, overhead in terms of decision making that people don't really need to ha ha have to do when they're choosing how to model their data. So being a bit more prescriptive around these kind of issues, um, I think will improve quality and simplify work for publishers. Um, it's also necessary for the work that we want to do on a validator because um, we want the validator to be, you know, again, quite prescriptive of you know, this, this field isn't right, here's how you should do it. Not this field is right, and here's one of three ways you could fix it, which is not that helpful. Um, but in, uh, in order to do that, we will end up making what I think are breaking changes to the specification. So we'll be taking away some of those options, and that will mean that potentially some of the published data will be considered to be invalid based on that version of the specification and the validator that, tool that we build. Um, I haven't gone through and tried to assess what the extent of that breakage would be because we've not really finalized the list of validation changes. Um, uh, Nick has been putting in a uh, list of uh, quite a few GitHub issues around this area, around some kind of detailed uh, improvements to the spec based on um, common mistakes that we've found in supporting people in publishing data. Um, in the original proposal I put together, I basically put together kind of 10 basic rules that we should be encouraging people to follow and um, revising the spec based on those. So things like numbers should be numbers rather than strings. Um, uh, if we're using duration, it should be a ISO duration. Um, where properties can have multiple values, then it should always be an array rather than just having the option to have a string or an array and letting the consumer uh, figure things out. So there's a set of kind of broad things that we can use to kind of just walk through the spec and make some changes. Uh, there might well be some additional 
recommendations that we want to put in that might change how people use specific properties. Um, so it, this, this kind of, it feels like uh, we've got a good sense of what these validation changes need, uh, need to be. Uh, we probably need to have a, a separate call, and I think probably the next, where's the next one, to go into, get into a bit more of the detail around that to see what, what would change. Um, but uh, the, the longer we leave this kind of work open, the, the worse that those kind of breaking changes will get because we've got, we're getting new feeds coming uh, online all the time. Um, and I don't want to have to go back and, and I want to reduce the amount of time that people might have to go back and fix things up. We're trying to uh, guide people into, you know, the kind of best practices that we're, um, we'll, we'll be putting into the spec already to be sort of mindful of those, those changes that are coming down the line. Um, but it's not something we can keep putting off. Um, so any, any thoughts on that in terms of priority or potential issues? Well, that all seems to make sense. So uh, one concrete question I had is that um, the way that we've um, in the in the spec, we say that we try we'll try and make kind of forwards compatible. But when we make changes, they'll be a backwards compatible. But obviously, some of this won't be backwards compatible. So this version of the spec. Uh, I was wondering whether we should actually call it 2.0 just to indicate that there is a breaking change, you know, for your semantic versioning, that's, that's what you would call it in a software release because it, it is slightly different um, in terms of its requirements than the previous spec. Um, would anyone have any issues if we went down that route rather than calling it 1.2? I think the only thing to be mindful of is that there's a lot of people who are currently implementing against what's there now. Um, so we just need to make sure. I think it's probably the right thing to do is do 2.0. I think we just need to do it quickly and the quicker the better because obviously, as you say, there's people implementing. And I'm just imagining now uh, Net will feel like they've got there and Cycling feel like they've, after 18 months of waiting, they've finally got to a working valid version and then we move the goalpost slightly and then it's not valid again. Um, and because some of the cycle times are so enormous, you know, 18 months is just so long. Um, obviously, um, the sooner, I think, especially as people are like presently um, really, um, you know, making these changes to their feeds. Uh, I think if we were to prioritize anything, I would suggest doing that earlier uh, or as soon as possible. Um, and just and where possible if there are rules that we can start to put in place um, to make it so that we can give guidance early to those that are already in, in, in flight so that when they finish the things like triathlon published today um, and uh, and then, then, then we need to I don't know where they are in the PR process but if anyone has noticed triathlon is on the, uh, the status page um, and uh, so I think there's some tweets going out later I, so obviously triathlon we'll have to make changes to do that. Um, the sooner we can tell them what those changes are, uh, I think, and have, and have them a chance to feedback on those proposals, um, the, the better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I was planning, you can see in the slides, I've, I've not preempted any decisions, so it's like, what, either 1.2 or 2.0, but um, I was thinking that we would start drafting that um, now um, to get, just to incorporate both roots and the validation work in an updated draft or set of updated drafts that will go out in the next few weeks with the aim to publish uh, maybe what we call 2.0 by the end of August. So it'd be working to the same time scale as, as booking. Uh, comfortable we can do that stuff in parallel. Um, it but if, um, if what we could say to people is that there will be a, um, to give us a bit of time to just get into the detail here, that by the end of this month, there'll be a draft of 2.0 that they couldn't be watching um, in order to help guide their uh, ongoing implementation work. So going back to what you were saying about getting stuff in, into UAT, 
it will be like if they're in flight at the moment um, at least we can start to point them at some clear documentation um, and then it would give uh, about a month for us to also do a bit of work with individual publishers to say here's what here's what's going to change in 2.0 and here's what's going to specifically affect your feed so just maybe go through and file some github issues with the individual data publishers to say this is what you need to do in order to be to hit 2.0 so to help them help give them some targeted advice rather than just leaving them to it um you know rather than just publishing it putting them at the spec and saying okay now conform um we'll give them a bit more help so that means we'll have to do a bit of a kind of engagement push around it but it, which i think is you know is in line with what you were suggesting um we could give longer but i think the longer we give it in order for people to start changing the more we're going to get stacked up behind it so um i, I quite like to try and hit that august end of august deadline for 2.0 Any other comments or issues? Um, I mean, in order to drive this forward, we'll, you know, I'll be, be doing more outside of these calls as well. Um, you know, maybe tagging people into specific issues that I want them to give some feedback on uh, and chasing people up to review specs to make sure that we've got everyone in a comfortable spot about when we drop both of these um, releases at the end of August. Um, and it also means that we need to have a kind of clearer, uh, clearer plan for what we need to cover off in these calls for the next, next few weeks. So uh, I kind of roughed out a schedule. Uh, you can let me know what you think. Um, so we've got, basically we've got a few things that are gonna be working in, in parallel. Um, so I think we need to give some time for both. So next call is on the 18th of July. Um, we can, so we'll have, um, we should have, have an updated uh, editor's draft by then. Um, and I think that will be um, stable enough that you could be starting to build through, as you say, build through as you say, Nick, to, to UAT. I think it will be um, pretty close, you know, pending implementation feedback, obviously. I think it'd be pretty close to, um, to what we want, pretty stable. So we can spend a bit more of a kind of detailed time dealing with any any issues that have been filed over the next couple of weeks in that call, um, and then use the other half of the call to step through in a little bit more detail just the list of what we plan to tighten up around validation. So we can just get a sense of um, the scope of that, what we want to try and cover. Uh, first of August. Um, like key thing there will be to kind of uh, be signing off pretty much what we plan to have in for the 2.0 modeling spec so that we can let it sit um, again pending feedback but let it sit for a month so people are clear about what's going to happen what, what, for them and we could do some engagement around it if we keep if we keep iterating on the spec too much during august it's just not going to give a clear target for people to aim at um, uh, I'll probably spend a bit, little bit of time uh, talking about the activity list on that call as well. Uh, maybe just give an update on what we learned from the community discussion on the 20th. Um, then the, the next calls will be uh, booking, um, just trying to make sure any, any issues that have come up from implementers that we dedicate a, a good hour to that on the 15th of August. And then 29th of August, the same for the uh, modeling spec. Um, and we'll, they'll be quite, for those, particularly for those latter two calls, I want them, they'll probably be quite uh, detailed, nitty gritty uh, discussions. We'll just go through and hopefully tick off and close down as many issues as possible, you know, depending on the level of feedback uh, to make sure that we've um, got some kind of consensus around where we want to be. Uh, so, you know, quite, quite a bit to do, but I think it's, it's achievable, uh, particularly if we get, you know, the, the review that's needed from the community and, and the, some of those trial implementations um, in place. So in terms of stuff for, for booking, um, do you think we're in a position now where we can reach out to our parks, Legend and others who are kind of waiting for 
waiting for the booking spec to drop, as it were, and say, please get involved. You can start implementing 0.5 now, and that feedback will be valuable. And by the time you've given us that feedback uh, and thought about it a bit, we'll have given you 0.1. So you can now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the given that it, from a functional point of view, if you're not using facilities, if you're just doing events, then you it's pretty much there. Um, I think in the current draft, there's just one section around um, that just documents how cancellation works that isn't in the spec, but that's going to work uh, similar to um, 0.3, I think. Um, so yeah, there's there's no I don't I don't there's no barriers in terms of like documentation etc that would stop somebody um, starting to have a more serious play with this now. Great. Good. Um, so, uh, I'll, so in terms of, um, communicating this more widely, I'll circulate the slides and a summary of what the plans are, um, to the mailing list. Um, I'll see if I can get some, um, some of it public on the open active blog as well, just to kind of summarize where, you know, we're putting up basically a few calls out to the community here for people to kind of get involved. Um, and let them know about where some changes are, are coming. Um, it might be good to uh, communicate that a bit more widely. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to to cover in today's call. Um, any any other business uh, um, that people want to go through? Nick, did you want to mention any of the? Like recently published data, I can bring up the status page if you want. Uh, sure. Uh, well, there's two. Uh, everyone active, uh, and uh, um, triathlon. So you can see triathlon there on the status page, um, which is the first published in a while. First of many, hopefully, given the number of things stacked up in the pipeline that should be converting soon. Um, so uh, that's there. Please do go ahead and play with that. Um, see what you think. Um, so uh, it's conformant to the modeling spec, hopefully pretty well. As I, I mean, if there's any bugs, obviously file them in issues. The validator that's gonna be hopefully created over the next few weeks will help people to um, make that a bit more, um, uh, yeah, concrete. And then everyone active. Um, if you, um, uh, yeah, if you go to data.everyoneactive.com um, and you'll see that what we've got there is, And it's not yet on the status page, but it is in fact there. If you go to documentation, you'll see that there is uh, three feeds. Um, there are gone live with uh, Tom. Thank you very much. The sessions, uh, facility uses, and slots for that. So um, they've not been updated yet to match the new facility spec. We weren't able to get that in in time, um, but hopefully we're going to be able to push an update um, next week, which will um, make them match at least some as close as we can i think there's some structural stuff um lee and i were talking about it might be harder to, to get done but we'll certainly do what we can to um make it as close as possible for that um so yeah it's good um there's also uh, other ones on the way decathlon and uh, netball and cycling's finishing touches are all in in, in kind of near term near future um, and a bunch of other, we should be seeing five or six G, uh, Gladstone uh, installs all going live with that same facilities and um, modeling spec. Which brings me to a quick question actually, AOB wise. Um, there are a few things that are still beta in those adapters that are about to be sprinkled across the world. Um, so I wonder whether there's a chance that we can um, address those things um, the main one, to be honest, is the availability, which I've just raised a, pro a, a, a proposal for today, um, which is that availability kind of micro syntax, more than four, less than four, which Gladstone um, implementation uses. Um, and I've proposed in that proposal that we um, follow what we've done with age range and basically just use quantitative value instead of a value in, in the remaining uh, available spaces property 
um, which means that you can either specify a number of running spaces, which is 90% of the use cases it works for, but obviously for Gladstone, uh, it doesn't. So we can then use min and max value um, for that. Um, so I don't know um, the thoughts on that, Lee, but if we were able to get kind of a rough consensus on that, uh, ideally sometime before Friday, if anyone has any <laughs> thoughts, uh, then uh, we can put this into what will then become the installed in several uh, physical spaces um, thing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. So hey, Nick, quick question, yeah. uh, just on Everyone Active, which mm -hmm. is awesome by the way, very cool. Um, is that ready? Is that, is that done or is things going to change to it? Aside from updating to match when new modeling specs come out. But apart from that, is that ready? Is it all their sites? It's all their sites. Uh, it's, it's all the data. Um, the, the, yes, there will be some changes today. Uh, but uh, we, uh, that might be why we haven't posted it on general in the community stack yet. But by the end of the day, um, but I might a quick steer on this and then I'm going to go through and make sure age range matches the latest spec for age range um, that gender matches our new enumeration for gender and um, uh, I think there's I think that might be the only two things that are in beta on that on the feed okay that's really helpful thank you and uh, I know through direct glazing with everyone active that previously they, they talked about monitoring it for a while to make sure it doesn't impact system performance on there and all that jazz. Is that still a thing or is that put to bed? Is, is this a pilot or is this done now? Uh, so the, you're right. So the community, we're going to announce to the community, well, I'm going to confirm this by the end of the day, but we'll be announcing to the community um, that this is live um, today. Um, so the open active community gets the sneak preview and can start to use it. Um, there's, there's a buffer between the use of the community using it and their system. So don't worry about thrashing it with hits. That's not going to affect what they're monitoring. Um, because the whole point of this is that there's a buffer between the one and the other. So, um, uh, the, what they're monitoring is whether they can keep the same level of real time, uh, there as they have at the moment. Okay. Which I guess every operator will do using this setup. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, hopefully Gladstone will give us a bit of a tick to say they're happy with it, but that's the idea. Um, and is there a process for if, let's say we're using Everon Active Data to power Change for Life, as a real example, um, and they discover some issues at their end, that means they need to do something drastic to their feed. Um, is there a process for data users, something, some announcement being made to, to put, so we're aware that that service is about to get changed? Yeah, yeah. Down. the mailing list, which will, which you can join as with every data set, um, they'll send a, a update to that mailing list if you go to the data set site. And sure, I'm on all the mailing lists and yet to have a single update. One from Good Jim I've had historically, but uh, just, just if that's the mechanism, they're going to use it, then that's great because every other data feed, from what I understand, sort of is, is there and is working and is fine. And everyone is the only one where I think they're proactively monitoring it, which means there is an option opportunity for it to uh, have an infusion, right? She gets turned off, no one knows until you call them and say, why is there so many less sessions? So um, whilst we're talking to them, it'd be good to make sure that if they know it, then great, but just try it at home. If you're changing this, it's being used live. Um, yeah, totally. So they're aware of that and that is, that is absolutely on the, um, yeah, um, that, that, that they've got the mailing list set up for that reason and they'll be announcing that through those routes and they're aware that there's impact. Part of the reason there's a staged release of this, so the staged releases are out and announced to the community, update the status bash dashboard so it's there, and then proper PR push through Twitter and um, you know wider newsletter channels. And then the, the wider push isn't happening for about two, three weeks. Um, and so basically expect it to continue to be in a kind of, un, not unstable, but just not like fully rock solid. Uh, state until then, until when the wider push happens. But that's the reason that it's staged. But but start using it. Find out if there's issues with it. You know, any data quality problems, for example. Um, they can. Be when you say when you say not in a rock solid state, what do you mean? I mean that they're still they're still um, 
monitoring it and um, there's still chances they may change some of the data in there or whatever in the two weeks. Okay, is that a defined two-week window then? Uh, do you need it to be? You can ask for it to be. Uh, well, yeah, well, if, if we're trying to use it for some of the biggest campaigns that we've got coming up this summer, then we need time to get the data for, for I'm in. So I guess from our point of view, we need time to get the data into our stuff and also then to analyze it and start doing what we need to do with it to make it right for this campaign. And f four weeks from now is, I think, the launch of, what are we on? So 4th of July? Three weeks from now, less than three weeks from now. This campaign is going live. So if it's ready now, we'd, we'd start bringing it in and augmenting it. If it's going to be subject to change, that's kind of difficult because we won't know what they've changed and what they haven't changed. Right. Okay, well, so um, d doing this in order then, if I can get, uh, maybe it's just Lee's thoughts realistically on that proposal in the very short term, um, I can probably move ahead with everything else and get that to a f like relatively stable, i.e. it's very, very unlikely to change state by the end of the day. Um, and then that's when the main man's going on holiday for a, a week, which is why there's a delay. Um, and, and we can get hit, I can get him today in our last, in our next conversation to give us uh, a date of when he's going to be happy for it to go live, assuming that nothing goes wrong that you can then use. Obviously then the point is you should start augmenting it, playing with it now, as everyone in the community should to check that there's nothing wrong with it. So we can fix it in the next, when he comes back from holiday. Um, but just in terms of when it's live, live. Yeah. Having that second date. Sure. Yeah. That'll be really helpful. Thanks. Amazing. Um, so yeah, so I guess Lee, the, the, I think it, it, I can show you the, well, if, you, if you looked at, look at the feed, you'll see there's some beta properties in there. It's basically just a question of, um, uh, seeing if we can get some kind of rough consensus on if those looks at like sensible ways forward. Um, I, I'm kind of reticent to bake in beta into this stuff before it gets deployed to 50 places. Um, but equally aware that we might not be able to get it into the proper, you know, version in time, but there might just be a hedge that we need to make here on one property. Um, if that's the one that's outstanding, I don't know. Okay. Well, we, we can follow up on that separately, I think. Okay. Cool. Sorry, that was a long a AOB, it somewhat off course. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I, th I think it's three o'clock, so I think I'm going to wrap us up here today. Um, but if there are any other comments that we will have on the roadmap or the scope of what we'll be doing, then um, either drop me an email or uh, follow up on the mailing list um, after I've uh, circulated the slides later. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for coming again uh, and giving your input. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Have a good rest of the day. Uh, and you. Thanks, everyone.